In a city as storied as Hong Kong, there's a long list of local icons. Star Ferry, the tram, curry fish balls. But there's one icon that literally towers above the rest. Lion Rock is a mountain situated between Kowloon Peninsula and the New Territories. It looks like a massive granite lion crouching above the city's skyscrapers. While Hong Kong is a city full of famous peaks, Lion Rock sits alone. And a major reason it has become so important to Hong Kongers is that, for many, it is more than a mountain. It's a symbol of the city's ability to overcome hardship and prevail in the face of adversity. Lion Rock, like many of Hong Kong's geologic features, is made of granite formed more than 100 million years ago, in a time when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. But our story, thankfully, begins at a far more recent moment in history, the late 1960s. It was this aftermath of a period of turmoil in Hong Kong that helped give rise to the idea that Lion Rock was more than just another mountain. In the 1960s, uh, Hong Kong was still under uh, British rules, whereas uh, over the border in mainland China, uh, the Cultural Revolution uh, kicked start in the 1960s. In 1967, Hong Kong was rocked by months of protests, riots, and bombings targeting colonial government institutions and anti-communist figures. Pro-communist groups, inspired by the political changes on the mainland, carried Mao's Little Red Book during protests against the colonial government. More hardline groups occupied schools and planted bombs throughout the city. The 1967 uh, riots, which is a kind of like spillover of the uh, Cultural Revolution that's going up in, uh, in the mainland. Uh, people have a lot of, had a lot of grievances about uh, the a huge uh, discrepancy between uh, poor, uh, the British government, the British Hong Kong government began to realize that uh, they knew very little about what's going on. Hong Kong at the time was growing as people fled the turbulence of the Cultural Revolution and crossed the border into what was then a British colonial city. Since the 1950s, okay, a lot of Chinese immigrants come into Hong Kong, okay, so that continued through the 1960s, and they uh, built up uh, temporary uh, huts on, on, on the hillside, okay. Up to the 1960s, there's still not enough uh, public housing. That is why uh, after this, the riots, they began to implement the uh, large-scale policy of public housing. Blocks of new flats awaited their first tenants. Picturesque as the old dwellings were from the outside, they were squalid by comparison. The troubles of the 1960s convinced the city's leaders that Hong Kong had to change. It kick-started an era of rapid modernization. So what actually um, happened after 1967? The government, particularly under uh, Governor Malay Ho's, uh, tried to try to um, rebuild Hong Kong. Okay, try to, of course, uh, to try to build up the new confidence in the people, and also the legitimacy of British rule. One of the signs of this modernization, television. In the 1960s, there was still not uh, any free public television. Okay, it was not until uh, 1967, uh, actually in December, uh, the TVB, the television uh, broadcast, uh, launched uh, its first uh, free-to-air TV uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, in fact, uh, there had been a rumor that TVB uh, launched in the December of 1967. Uh, was actually uh, sped up by the crisis of 1967, so the government would really want to have a, uh, a public television, okay, a public entertainment uh, to try to pacify uh, society. Rumor or not, television sets quickly became a must-own item in Hong Kong. In 1967, only 10 to 20 percent of households owned a TV. 
by 1976, that number had risen to more than 90 percent. It was then that the colonial government saw an opportunity to get involved. The RTHK in the early 70s enjoyed rather uh, some uh, free hand. Uh, that was actually the, uh, the birth of the uh, Below the Land Rock uh, series. The story may uh, revolve around the family. It is about right, uh, Hong Kong people living under the same roof and with the Lion Rock uh, up, up above as the kind of icon. The series was immensely popular, in no small part because it was telling authentic stories about life in Hong Kong, and it used the city itself as its set. Below the Lion Rock series actually was well known, uh, was being the very first uh, pioneer of doing a location uh, shooting. So from the very beginning, the story, the core story is about the public housing estate families, which pretty much reflect the background of early 1970s. Although uh, the government is somehow, we sometimes will be critical of the government policies, will be critical of the social problems. But at the end of the day, uh, these people uh, will still be optimistic, will still be working together, sticking together to solve the problems, and they have a better picture tomorrow. So somehow I think the, 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 the mass media of these uh, RTHK programs actually began to build a kind of like uh, cohesion, okay? a kind of uh, symbolic uh, cohesion uh, in the minds of the people of Hong Kong. I think below the Lion Rock series, before it was running the television shows, I don't think that people would take uh, Lion Rock right, as a kind of a symbol of an icon for Hong Kong uh, identity. Here we are more like in the north area of Wong Tai Sin, where there are all the uh, high density public estates. And uh, we are pretty much the closest buildings to the Lion Rock are here. I come from Paris. It's a very different city than Hong Kong. First thing that struck me here is like how diverse is the architecture here and how tall can be all the buildings. It creates some very interesting contrast when you see this very huge skyscraper just next to a very old and tiny building. Graphically, it's quite uh, striking and that's what makes me start to do photography actually. really more inspired by painters, my, uh, like those kind of old style artists. There is this very iconic uh, series of uh, ukiyo-e uh, called uh, 36 views of uh, Mount Fuji uh, from um, Hokusai. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a body of work that I keep looking at and uh, that I really loved. And I had this idea of, oh, should I do one day like 36 views of Lion Rock? I was... Uh, Looking at the way they manage to show the, I mean, the same subject, but in such a diverse way that you, you never feel bored from one picture to another. So for me, like the, 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 the idea was to show the diversity of the different kind of street scenes that you can witness in Hong Kong. And uh, knowing also all the meaning that it has, the symbolic meaning it has to all the people, just kept adding um, uh, reasons for me to focus on that mountain. So we are on top of a shopping center, so we have a bit higher point of view and uh, just in front of us, in between the building, we can see the head of the Lion Rock appearing. What I like about here is that it really shows like the density of the city and uh, I really love that contrast between the, the, the big natural rock and uh, the, the city side, very urbanized, very straight. So yeah, I, I quite like the photo I took here, that's why I chose it for the cover of the book. I think it encapsulates like, the spirit of Hong Kong in a way, like the, the city side as well as the, 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 the Lion Rock, which is like more like the natural side of the city, the spiritual side, let's say.
It's a spirit that's changed with the times. When the idea of Lion Rock spirit first took hold, it was seen as embodying the collective perseverance of some of the city's poorest, working together for a better tomorrow. Through the years, this idea of what exactly that better tomorrow looks like has made the Lion Rock spirit an idea that keeps evolving. While it was once about persevering in the face of hardship, during the Umbrella Movement of 2014 and the 2019 protests, Lion Rock itself became a focus of calls for universal suffrage and democratic reforms. The Lion Rock is just like is is that huge mountain that is here. It was here before before Hong Kong uh, was really becoming a city. It is here through it keeps being here throughout all the generation. So the, the Lion Rock is still here, but the people change, and so the meaning they put behind it also change. It's both flexible and consistent, something that people reach for in times of uncertainty. I, I think the word crisis, okay, uh, would be a good word or idea, okay, about the Lion Rock spirit. Okay, so it is also in moments of deep social and political crisis. Uh, in moments when people need something, cohesive agents to uh, to shape up their identity again. Okay, I think the Lion Rock spirit always uh, will be recalled by the people. <laughs>